Hi, my name is Marek Karabun and I'm an economist working for a global consulting firm. However, my biggest passion is the city of Wrocław. It's history, presence and the future. It's a long love affair already. I've been born and raised here and uh, even at the age of five, my childhood dream was to become the president of the city. Uh, actually, this has not changed till now, so mind me at the 2040 elections. Uh, Wrocław has always taken a huge part of my spare time and spare money. Two weeks ago, I have spent my Christmas bonus on this 15th century view of the city that you can see over here. Uh, some might say it's extremely geek and that they would prefer to buy a car using this money, but I find it fascinating. For me, the best thing about Wrocław knowledge is that it allows you to notice more details every day during each and every walk in the city. You stop seeing stores and you start seeing stories. For example, let's take a look at Plac Kościuszki. You all know it for sure, but did you know that 250 years ago it was a place of a huge battle where Prussian forces defeated Austrians and therefore liberated the city? Their general, called Tauentzin, was later buried in the middle of the square in an impressive tomb designed by Karl Gotthard Langhans, the same architect that built the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin. Can you see Renoma in the background? Uh, it dates back to 1930 and it's been built in just nine months, from the first shovel of the ground to the official opening. What is pretty impressive, especially when you compare it to two years of restoration works recently. Uh, <laughs> finally, move just a couple of steps north and you will see this new monument of Bratislav Chrobry, the first Polish king. And some people like it, but history geeks like me always compare it to what used to be there previously. So, um, to further realize my Wrocław passions, a couple of years ago I have joined a newly formed society called the Society for Beautifying the City of Wrocław, or TUMW as it is called in Polish, a group of like-minded people but coming from all kinds of backgrounds, lawyers, uh, economists, architects, historians, coders and so on. Together we shared the love for the city but also a need to improve it. We have decided on a no funding, no budget, no dependencies operating scheme and selected four main areas to focus on. Urbanism, transport, aesthetics and identity. In my five years in TUMF, we have conducted several projects, many of which were a direct response to what annoys us every day. For example, uh, we had been disgusted with the way that uh, blocks of flats are renovated with the infamous styrofoam and terrible colors. Therefore, we have selected the most controversial of them all, blocks at Plac Nowy Targ, and proposed our own vision of how they could be renovated. A combination of the original project and the modern design. This vision caused a vibrant discussion in the local media and even made it to the cover page of Gazeta Wyborcza national portal. Whether it will be used in real life, we don't know, but now for sure no one will put styrofoam and paint suns and clouds over there. Another painful thing about living in this city is that the streetcars are terribly slow. And one of the reasons for that is the poor condition of trucks. Therefore, as I really like digging through the numbers, I have scanned all previous, current and proposed budgets of the city and discovered, uh, to my astonishment, that after spending 5 million zloty uh, on renovating trucks this year, the city plans to invest only 1 million next year and nothing afterwards, zero. Uh, I did some uh, research and calculations and drew slides showing that the correct amount should be more or less 5 million zloty annually and set it to the city council. Two weeks later, we got a very nice response saying, as always, that everything is correct and that we should not worry. Uh, <laughs> however, the very same month, we have checked the newest version of the proposed budget and guess what? The numbers were adjusted to almost exactly what we have proposed. Also, <laughs> also not many inhabitants of the city know that there are 10 Nobel Prize winners coming from Wrocław. But as all of them are German, only one has a street named after him. Therefore, we've decided that this needs to be changed and we proposed a candidacy of Professor Reinhard Zelten, an economics Nobel Prize winner born in Wrocław in 1930, to the title of the Honorary Citizen of Wrocław, the highest award that the city council can give. Uh, 
it, the candidacy got a lot of positive buzz in the local press. We got official support of deans of three main Wrocław universities and an endorsement letter from John F. Nash from Princeton, another economics Nobel Prize winner who you all know for sure from the Beautiful Mind movie with Russell Crowe. Uh, despite that, Professor Zelten has not been awarded this title this year, but we are going to propose his candidacy once more next year, and we are sure that this time it's going to happen. But it's not only about being annoyed and reacting to it. When a couple of years ago, Wrocław was trying to become the seat of the European Institute of Technology, we've decided to help, and we got an idea of promoting this through having windows on one of the buildings on the market square light up in a way that would show an EAT sign. This is an early sketch made using a pre-war picture and Microsoft Paint, and <laughs> this is the final outcome. Uh, the sign was there for four consecutive nights before the decision day. But we also dream big from time to time. In the geographical center of Wrocław, uh, just behind the Świebocki railway station, and actually not very far away from here, there are hectares of desolated area. Polish railroads company wanted to restore train connections over there, while the city planned to build an elevated quasi-highway through the middle of the terrain, what would effectively divide the area into four separate blocks, thus stopping possibility of building normal city district there. Therefore, we have teamed up with experts from the University of Technology, and we have proposed our own vision, in which railroad, railroad tracks are hidden underground, the elevated highway turns into a Champs-Élysées-style alley, and uh, another piece of normal, healthy city is built. On top of that, in our plan, the underground railroad becomes a start of Wrocław subway system. As of today, the city authorities don't want to build the elevated highway anymore, but instead they have commissioned an independent research studying possibilities of having subway in Wrocław. There are several similar organizations across the country, almost in every big Polish city. Mm. They are all very different, using different methods and having different ways, but we have the same goal, improving the cities we live in. How wide the spectrum is can best be seen by taking a look at two organizations, Grupa Pewnych Osób from Łódź and My Poznaniacy from Poznań. The first one, Grupa Pewnych Osób is a loose conglomerate of activists that concentrate on hands-on direct actions, embarrassing local city authorities. For example, they plant grass where it's destroyed by parking cars. They clean long forgotten cemeteries. They uh, organize symbolic funerals when another historical factory is demolished. Or they build replicas of food selling shacks to address a problem of poor aesthetics of food to go outlets in the city center. On the other hand, we have my Poznaniacy that use legal procedures to influence decisions of city authorities and point them in the right direction. They read every zoning and send their suggestions. They read every budget and propose better solutions. They use Public Information Act to uncover what the city would like to hide. They organize debates and write articles. But last year, they even moved one step further and took part in local election themselves. And it turned out to be a, to be a huge success because they got 9.4% of all votes, by far the best ever result for an organization of this kind in Poland. Summing it up, there are many ways in which you can change the city you live in. You don't really need a budget. You don't really need professional knowledge. You don't really need a huge organization. The only thing that's really needed is your passion. Thank you very much.